Good evening, and welcome back to the world of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly D&D 5e actual play campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Tenandis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter elder tonight. And Joel Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, welcome. We are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I record new videos every Tuesday and Thursday over on our YouTube channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for GMs. So check it out at the Dungeon Dudes YouTube channel. You can also check us out on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio only podcast as well. And with that, let us return to the world of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible, while simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war. The power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Rudy, Sebastian, and Pluto had found their way into an underground complex beneath Altbrook University, tracking the strange, monstrous creatures of flesh, metal, and bone that had emerged from a, a hole in the quad of the university. It is deep into the middle of the night as you make your way from the rotting and disgusting cells as the heavy door closes behind you and you weld it shut. As you look down this long and dreary, ominous hallway, you can see that it branches off into four doors. There are trails of filth, blood, and other stained substances that stretch down the length of the hallway. Here and there, bits of boxes and barrels and bags are stored in piles, but the hall itself is quiet, aside from a soft gurgling noise that echoes down the hall, like that of a, cr a creek or a brook. Um, I'm grabbing the uh, syringe staves off the wall and handing them to Pluto. Um, we might need these. I did use all the charges in my axe last time, so I just want to make sure to see if I can get them back on a tonight or in like a month. Okay, I rolled a three, if I, unless I roll one. Okay. <laughs> three is close to one. Close. I don't know why I got real sure. nervous there. Yeah. <laughs> That's not like it like explodes or anything. So, yeah. Um, so, d question: Did we still want to consider taking a short rest? I'm nervous about spending an hour down here. We're in unfamiliar territory. Mm. There were monsters about. There was a third cell that had broken bars. We don't. We are not. We have not accounted for a third monster. Okay. There's also students missing. Mm. We're in the depths of the school. I have classes tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Look at you being. Look at you being studious. Listen. It wasn't that I was bad at school. Okay, I was bad at school. You were bad. You're terrible. You keep saying you were bad Absolutely at school. Absolutely terrible. I paid a lot of attention in evocation class. <laughs> <laughs> I got That's an A. It. And then an, an E for effort. And yes. actually, I did Fire. pay a lot of attention in, um, in the summoning class, mm -hmm. except they failed me because I tried to summon a demon. Got it. He tried to do too many levels above. Didn't you station. succeed? Technically, I successfully yeah. summoned a demon. So but technically, you should have passed. That's on, that's on them. Uh, I apparently, though, it's not good to forget your magic circle, mm. and it's not good to just let it unleash itself upon the world. Yeah. Got it. 
Yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, so we're not going to short rest. Investigate for now. Unless you guys really need it. But I'm worried about taking an hour down here. Why yeah. don't we check out this hallway? Yeah. Kill a couple more things and then reevaluate. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I want to make my way towards the potential babbling brook sound that we heard. It's coming from the very end of the hall. Mm. How many rooms is there? There are three rooms on the same side as the cells, and then there's one room on the opposite side. Shall we take a room each, just in case? At least listen in. Okay. I'm going to go to the one on the end and take a little listen. Which which one? The one facing the same way or the opposite way? Yeah, I figure we all like kind of step up to the doors. On okay. the same On uh, the same side and listen in. These rooms all are quiet. And then I want to go to the other one after we've done listening for about 10 seconds. You hear the sounds of bubbling and perhaps a fire or running water. Mm. I think it's worth, I think it's, I don't know if I should yell down the hallway. I, I walk back towards you. Um, actually, at this moment, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to create a telepathic bond between the three of us. Oh. Okay. Um, and I'm going to, I'm like, since, since it's all quiet in here, say we investigate these rooms, there could be something, either a clue to where we are, who's behind this, anything. The doors are actually labeled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try reading the door. <laughs> Me too. I'm going to look up at the door. There is a rusted and ancient sign that is engraved with the words, Morgue. Going to open the door. Does it open? Yeah. You unlatch it and open the door. And inside is... A morgue. A very unsanitary morgue. <laughs> Ooh. It is a small chamber with several alcoves the state the, as, as you would imagine it has the wall alcoves that a corpse can be opened up and rolled into many of them are hanging open or ajar and there are sacks of several other coffins and stretchers that are in here the room smells because whatever is even though the bodies would be kept relatively cool down here they're still rotting they're still in in state varying states of decay Although some of them are perhaps magically preserved. Um, you can see that there are there's a small table in the, in the room with a tray of empty syringes and a barrel of various embalming chemicals that are kept in here. Several of the bodies have been dismembered and there are body parts strewn about as well. Um, most notably though, there are First of all, there is a large cage in this room with several bowls that might have once contained water in it. There are also two steel coffins with a porthole that could be opened and closed on the front of it. And you can hear, now that you're in this room, there is something moving inside those containers. Well, that's a little weird for a morgue. Bodies shouldn't be moving and cages shouldn't be in a morgue. Um, guys, we have uh, something's moving in here. Uh, do you need us to come kill it? Might need an axe or a sword just in case. All right. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna make my way back. <laughs> Into the room. Um, um, shall we? Yeah. Uh, the, it's the coffin that's moving. The, there, in this chamber, there are two steel coffins. Mm -hmm. They are closed with chains, mm. and there are portholes right. that could slide open to see what's inside. Uh, you open it, we'll be ready. Uh, all right. What's the worst that could happen? And I'm going to slide open the porthole on the first one and look in. It re shows the face. There are bars inside is a mutated creature, a delirium drag. It is a human that is clear, it is obvious, given your experience, that this is a person who has succumbed to eldritch contamination and mutated into a delirium drag. There are pieces of delirium shards reaching up their neck. 
um, and their eyes are on long stalks that try to look out through the, the, the porthole, and its mouth has become long and distended, and its arms are both tentacles. Oh, God. Uh, Pluto? I think, I don't think this should be here. Uh, Can you leave it in there for now? Here. I think that we should just, uh, you know, between the bars, just... Yeah, that's probably the best. Uh, I'm going to um, put this delirium dredge out of its misery. Okay. The other steel con- coffin contains another one as well. I got this. Similarly mutated. So we'll deal with re- it silently and quickly. <laughs> can I borrow your javelin? I can't really fit my axe. <laughs> yeah, you're like with your axe. Like... <laughs> examining several of the other um, hatches in the morgue, there are a variety of specimens, both uncontaminated and contaminated corpses. Uncontaminated corpses. Yeah. Let's check out one of these. Does it look recent? Looking through the I corpses here, you they have been stripped bare, um, and they are. It's hard to tell, but there are there are several men and women that are interred here. They're young enough that you would believe they were university students. Mm. Hmm. That's problematic. I mean, just, you know, is there any, there's no, like, no, no, like, equipment pile, pile of clothing. There were some crates stacked outside. We could check, maybe, maybe we get some idea on, like, the students, because we know some of the people that were missing last i'm just concerned about how many corpses were found and i I didn't think there was that many students going missing Uh, more concerning i mean not more concerning this is all concerning but equally equally concerning question investigating some of the other bodies several of them also bear markings that might indicate that they were members of the queen's men or some sort of criminal outfit or uh, some of them in fact um, one of the punish the forms of punishment that does exist in Westamar is branding. Mm. Uh, so you can be banished from a city and you can be branded on your face or your body so everyone knows you're a criminal. Mm. Several of these other people have such markings, but there are others who just you have no idea of, of, of how to identify them. So there's there's more people that are here than just the students that were listed as missing. Okay. All the monsters that we fought, were probably either students or it looks like criminals. Mm. They were probably started off kidnapping criminals and when they needed more bodies and there were no criminals around, they moved to kidnapping students. Or they used the criminals to kidnap the students and then they ran out of, and they used the opposite. Either way, they're stealing people. This is like some sort of invasion of body snatchers. Mm. Not like in a weird way, just in a regular way. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's, it's all very uh, concerning. Next door? Well... Should we... Maybe we shouldn't set this whole room on fire. That might just be my... <laughs> well, that's that's your gut talking, and uh, I think you're on the right track. Well, I think we just check out the other rooms, and then we can light it all under up. Under the ground where there's not a lot of ventilation, that might not be a good idea right now. Right. But, yes, when we come back to it, maybe. <laughs> well, control. Some of these bodies are infected, so I just worry that uh, given, I don't know, anywhere from one minute to a few days, they could come back. Yeah. Is well, there... we won't leave it. Is there, like, an obvious... Um delirium space like are they inserting the delirium here is there an operating table or is it just there's no operating table this is just storage for bodies got it you mentioned crates um pluto yeah i'm gonna start rummaging through their personal belongings so this is outside and yes there are several barrels and crates where scraps of clothing and other belongings have been placed um, anything of, it does appear that anything of value that they might have had was taken mm. for it's mostly just clothing that as well, what you can tell is the clothing was removed by someone taking a pair of scissors and cutting the clothing in half and mm-hmm. just throwing it in here. What about boots? Are there boots that I can wear? I'm currently <laughs> barefoot. There are some boots. I take 
some nice boots. <laughs> Are there any notebooks? Uh, anything that, you know, if we assume there were students that maybe were captured? Something to ID like... them. Yeah, like I was like, yeah, anything like uh, uh, monogrammed robes. <laughs> Student cards. <laughs> Water bottles. Searching around, <laughs> there is in one of the, the pockets of one of the doublets that it was cut in half is a handkerchief that uh, has the initials HB sewn into it. Hubris. Bull point. Um, or someone more. Hugo Bot, maybe? Oh. He's and that was one of the missing. Ben Bartleby and Hugo Bot are the two names that we had. There that was a Bartleby. student being kidnapped when we chased the creatures down. Christoph! I forgot! <laughs> we mm. probably need to go get him. Don't we? Yeah, he was <laughs> screaming too. He was still alive. Christoph's clothes are in here. <gasps> The clothes that he was wearing today. Oh no! He must be in the next chamber. We have no time for a short rest. Stop dilly dallying. We gotta the, save the, your friend. The bodies that we just killed, none of them look like they couldn't have turned Kristoff into a delirium dragon like two minutes. Doesn't happen that quickly. I mean, we haven't been doing this for two minutes. Yeah, we've been probably hit like an hour. I mean, you know, you say potato, I say potato. Two minutes, an hour. I mean, we make haste then. Let's uh. Quickly look in these rooms and continue yeah, on yeah. our journey. I guess that's a probably uh, probably cause for uh, some. Uh... Totally forgot about him. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the guy. Opening the next door, there's several hazard signs warning dangerous alchemical fluids. Mm. And opening up is an incredibly well-stocked room of moderately uncommon to rare alchemical reagents and a shelf filled with carefully placed rows of vials and bottles of various liquids and potions. Rate it. We totally rate it. <laughs> My first instinct is to take you out of the room. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Rudy, why? No. We don't need you. No, 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 no. The worst that can happen, we we explode. Rudy, this is really important. I have a side mission, and I'm gonna walk back into the room. Oh Would I know what what painting medium he needs paint. delirium painting medium looks like? I start rummaging through all the bottles, and I'm throwing them and, behind. And I no, the no. Ones that you throw. There's, no, okay, no. You don't know no, enough no, about no, no. chemistry and alchemy to really judge if the. It's likely that the materials here might be able to be used to make that. I am proficient in alchemy. You are? Okay. Give me a, give me a check with your tools then. 13. Okay. With that check, you would probably need to spend about a good hour going through the contents of this room to carefully and quickly assess what is in here. However, Prominently displayed within in this room, though, are roll me a d6. Five. You find five potions of superior healing. Wow. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, here, take these. Thank you. Uh, yeah, five. And and I'll take give two. me roll me one more d6. I'll take one. You take two. Cool. Oops, sorry. Two. Okay, you would find nothing else of immediate value, but there could be, but there's a lot of, the po the healing potions are clearly labeled, but there's a lot of other vials in here, probably at least another dozen vials that are absolutely magical in their effects. However, there's one thing that is unique about all of the potions in this chamber. They are all in syringe form. Oh. Hmm. That makes it much more challenging. <laughs> I take three random, and I'll tell you when I want to use yeah. them. I take three random syringes, and can I also have three? Or is it no? You want to take three random syringes if you don't know what they are? Yeah. Okay. I want three different colors too. Okay. Very yeah. purposefully different. And if there's different I colors than him, I want different ones. Open my bag of holding, variety. and I'm just gonna 
<laughs> We're gonna carefully oh, put everything. We don't in. want them. You know, they're probably glass, right? Yeah. Don't, don't, don't have them mix in with each Aren't other. Like stone tablets in there too, like. Mm. We, it's the worst. <laughs> Can it place them nicely on a shelf in your bag of holes? Okay, fine. I I I, go, I step into my it bag. It is when of... you're clearing out the hole that you do find there is one vial of aqua delirium and one vial of aqua expurgo oh. within all this. Wait, so they've been making aqua expurgo, aqua delirium? No, maybe not making these. No, at least no. Her. These are academy vials. <sighs> So they've acquired. Yeah, they bought them. You got don't, them. don't know if they, they've, they've got it, but they've, stolen they've stolen it. They've possibly. They've, yeah, jeez, that's not good. That's not good. I'm writing down three syringes of unknown magical <laughs> yeah. substance. We, I just imagine giving a lecture, just being. Like, I'm gonna say I took about ten. <laughs> okay. People shouldn't be using there's, things there's they don't a understand lot here. And you can there, always come back. There's more. many more other things that would be used as spell components, reagents or other chemical agents of various volatile types. Um, some of these might be moderately to extremely explosive, corrosive, or worse. I mean, guys, please do not mix Don't them. use them. Once we're done here, I can I can take a look. I can figure them out. I'll figure we could bring them back to uh, El El Eldrick and River and they could also take a look, right? Yeah. I mean, you could too, but. This yeah. is a lot of potions. There's a lot of people who can figure out what these are. And also use them. Trust me, I know how to figure out a really easy way to figure out what they do. <laughs> Pluto, no. I'm just, I'm just saying. I have some I have I have a very, very scientific method where I tackle someone <laughs> and stab them with What them. if it's like a potion of like greater strength or something? Then it just makes it more fun. <laughs> We need to find Krista. <laughs> oh yeah, Krista. Wait, one more room. And I jog to the end room. And open okay. it. Okay. Within this last room are several shelves bearing large chests of steel and lead mm. with padlocks on them. Delirium? Isn't that what happens when? Thick. Yeah. That's generally how we... Um... Store it, right? Store delirium. Especially at the academy, I've seen a few of those around. Um, I mean, I'm making an assumption. We're gonna try to pick the lock on one of them. Are they locked? Yeah. I have, I have these tools. Okay. 12. You break the lock. Oh, no. Can we just shove oh. it in your bag of hole and take it back? Wait, wait, is it a, is it like a lock that's yeah. attached to the, it? Rudy, just, Ax it, or else I'll, I'll just, I, I, I go to just hammer the lock off. I ax it. <laughs> Axing the lock off, um, these are big containers. Yeah. Yes. So does the, like, because is, is it like the lock, is it built into the chest? No, or it's is a padlock. It... Okay, okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, oh. I mean, I'm going to try to bash the lock. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, and then all of a sudden you <laughs> Okay. I'm putting one of the containers neatly stacked in separate wooden, in, in separate individually lead lined cases in this container are probably well were probably upwards of two dozen delirium crystals but over half of the contain the individual containers that were in here are empty now and is there anything on the container that would give the indication that it's from the academy give me an investigation check 14. These containers, this way of, of shipping delirium has become a bit of a standard practice for anyone that knows what they're doing. Okay. The people who know what they're doing include the Academy, the Queen's Men, the Hooded Lanterns know what they're doing. Like these t packing a lead line chest like this with delirium to ship it out of the city safely and securely mm -hmm. this indicates that it's this is some so an amount of delirium that this wasn't just adventurers that went into drakenheim and found something willy-nilly and brought it back mm -hmm. this was someone provided or they acquired it again um the the only thing that you do detect 
looking around on the crates is there's a bit of corrosion on the crates and a bit of sort of rust and grime and looking quite closely the streaking on the container you should think that it might have come up from underwater mm. and this is on the outside or the inside on the outside there was that um that ship the ship that that we were informed about the missing ship mm -hmm. that was transporting uh the the sea monster that you fought uh, yeah, that you fought a sea monster too. I did. Oh, so sick! You've never fought a sea monster, Pluto. You're right. We need to find an ocean <laughs> now. I demand it. Listen, it was quite the adventure. You never know what you're gonna get to fight in the future, but be warned. It's it's mm. not all sunshine when when you're fighting a delirium infested sea monster. Do you think though that? I mean, Thanks. we were investigating a missing ship. We were. We have well, you. sea laden chests brought up from the depths. It's, um, well, we something would have to either go down there and get them out, or maybe these were just chests that were recovered by some of those Queen's men, and then they were stolen or recovered by these horrible creatures. Either way, I, 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 I don't know how we're supposed to give this news and have this school stay intact. I mean, this school's breaking every rule. Well, we don't know if it's the school, but we do know that there was some connection to at least this part of the school with Liberia, which was a seafaring, you know, port. Right. It might have been something to do with that. We've got, we've got delirium, we've got infected students being transformed into monsters as well as criminals being kidnapped and brought in, which like, yeah, they're criminals, but the university shouldn't have them in their basement with delirium jammed in but them, right? But I don't right? think they know. Like, the, would the academy even know because of no, Fog Cloud? No, I, I just think that there are, this can't be just one person operating. I think there's a group yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So like there is some corruption here at this school and they are they are they are doing things that are generally frowned upon um, and are probably going to lead like we we don't need another You're going to hit them with so many citations, it's going to make their heads spin. I don't know the citations. I don't pay attention to that, but like I I know that Eldrick will be unhappy. Well, then if Eldrick needs the evidence, we should take it with us. That's that's our job. We're here to gather the evidence. Yeah, yeah. As much evidence as you as you piling potions. And... I'm I'm going to. Do these chests fit in my bag of holding? No, they're Can way you, too big. For are me. there like internal like oh oh pieces holding do, delirium do, that are a bit smaller? Is there any like markings yeah. on the chest that are indicate like that it was part of that ship? Like any cargo marking? Given the nature of the delirium trade. People don't mark the chests yeah. with identifying information. That it's just not the way it's. That's done. how you lose delirium, <laughs> and that's how it ends up here. There's Bad no paper trail. Inventory yeah. management. <laughs> Am I able to take one of the crystals uh, wrapped yeah, in you lead? Can. Yeah. And like just kind of wrap it up and put it in my bag of holding, yep. just to like bring out and be like, this was in you the. Can yeah. Take all of it. I can't fit all of it. I also, take some of it. <clears throat> okay. We should definitely come back and at least clear it up after we're finished. Yeah. Um, I was going to say that this also tracks for um, the assassination attempt. How so? Well, I think whoever's running this, they obviously had like this army of undead that we fought underneath the... Oh, the cathedral. The cathedral. Right. right. And they were really planning something with a bunch of bodies. So I don't even think we've even seen the surface of the bodies. This is sort of like a makeshift morgue. They had numbers. Mm. Like, how did they get those numbers? I see where you're coming from. So we might not have seen all of it. Well, let's, I mean, if we have a chance to save Kristoff, is that important? 
I guess. Do we want to make that important? I mean, I think it's going to lead us in the right direction of who we're looking I, for. I don't think I can confidently sit back and let someone die knowing that we can save them. No, you're right. Also, he's the Duke's son, so we probably should. Yeah, I think we should really try to keep him on our side. Yeah. Will, we don't want Wilhelm getting into trouble because, oh, his son got killed on our watch. Mm. Yeah. So I don't need Wilhelm mad at me. He, he won't be mad at me. What's next? Okay. <clears throat> you open the doors into a sprawling laboratory. The stonework down here displays its age and the efforts to restore this room into whatever its purpose was are clear. What was, pro what, what was perhaps only a few years ago a decrepit and abandoned lab and study has been transformed into an industrious workshop and chemistry lab for a variety of construction and experimentation purposes. Several large tables are covered in beakers, alembics, burners, vials, and other experiments partway through their process with barrels of chemicals, water, and others stored throughout the room. There is a churning great alchemical burner that has a cauldron of bubbling liquid burning at the opposite end of the room. And there are two great stone crucibles as well in the chamber for melting even uh, hotter liquids, perhaps even strong enough to uh, work with, do metalworking. Mm. And in fact, a forge has been installed in the room as well f with an anvil for working with metals providing almost anything anyone would need to do any kind of chemistry, engineering, uh, or other workshopping. And you can see that by the forge, uh, this in, in this room, they've been building a huge array of different materials and things that show the components of the creatures that you have faced thus far in their early stages of construction. And I should be specific in saying there are no body parts here um, that, or, or at least no full corpses. There are several tables where there are, it is clear that the tanks that organs will be going into are being built, the plates of armor. So if you can imagine that preparatory stage when all the parts that you might need to have that would be applied to the body, these are all being built and fashioned here, as well as all the various chemicals and other means that are necessary for the construction of those monstrosities. But the actual assembly of those beings does not look like it is being done here. All manner of weapons, there are armor. Essentially, this is a full workshop that could run at a, run a capacity. Probably comfortably, a dozen people could work here together on assembling what is needed uh, for, the, for the various parts, right? And it does look like, well, things have been, it looks like the, the forge is kept in a, in a semi-lit state so that it can be restarted the next day. And whatever's on the burner is simmering, but everything else has kind of been put, like there's no in, like the most in progress things look like is like people are intending to come back to this perhaps tomorrow. And is there evidence of, like you said, there can be like around 12 people. Is there evidence that there are 12 people around working here? Like that There's thing? no one working here. Like you guys are coming in here way after the middle of the night. Oh, I'm just saying right? like evidence of them have worked oh, here. Yes. So like, yes. how, guessing how many people are involved it, in this. It seems official though. And, um... and not, not only that, they would need to be, th this is not, entry level stuff that is happening here. This is the work of skilled artisans and people who know what they're doing. Um, interestingly enough, as you per peruse the various tables, Sebastian, there are scrolls and spell books that are placed on some of the tables as well. But it's clear that whoever's been working with these has been annotating them and there are notebooks that are that are left and, and coming up to one of the tables 
There's even some delirium that has been left out on one of them. Uh, guys, investigating this room, it's obvious that we are working with a group. There's multiple workstations. All of them were in use. But also, there's delirium at work here, which usually isn't handled by people from manufacturing needs other than the academy. And there's spell scrolls and books. Um, checking the scrolls and books, they're, they're arcane in nature. Correct? Give me an arcana check. Uh, 14. Okay. Many of the spell books are arcane. But what you can see is that, and some of them are spell books that you've recognized in terms of like they're well-known works and collections of spells that you would have encountered in your studies at the academy. But what has happened is that someone has annotated in the margins and left notes saying, um, substitute nitrate, uh, uh, like substitute nitrates, pull in um, these, the v listing out various chemicals, applying this much heat or electricity, um, or uh, in, in other places they've noted various types of blood of certain creatures that they might use instead. Um, and writing a, and then translating the arcane formula into and breaking it down into ways of reverse engineering or replicating it. So they're, they're reverse engineering spells so that they can perform them using science. That's a reasonable conclusion. They're fake spell casting. Those monsters. They're taking what I do and they're making it stupid. <laughs> you want to break things? They're using, no. they're using. They're not making it stupid. They're making it accessible. Yeah. That's, that's not how magic works. That's illegal. <laughs> that's dangerous. That's convenient for someone like me. No. That's I really love, dangerous. <laughs> I love the accessibility feature. Picture There's one Pluto thing spells. very particular that you see that is being worked on on one of these tables and it's the bubbling liquid beyond and the notes describe Rock me in. a process by which someone can you can create a concoction that combines delirium ingredients used in aqua delirium and what you see laid out here are preserved vials of blood that are labeled mageborn and there is a process being described here by which someone makes an injection to inject themselves with the notes just describe a process of combining delirium aqua delirium and the blood of a mageborn to build an injection and the 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 results indicate that essentially the 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 notes go on to say you know, our, our process is enough that by imbibing our new development, we have successfully been able to cast a spell. <laughs> That's not great. I am going to pop into my bag of holding a vial of blood labeled, a spell book with annotations, and the general instructions here that prove that they were able to cast mm. a spell. I'm, I'm gathering evidence. The, 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 whoever's written these notes goes on, goes on to say that, um, results are inconclusive, um, and m notates that the amount of chemicals that they had to involve estimates that probably the, uh, probably a person could only survive taking this substance two or three times mm. in their life before it would cause catastrophic effects on their physiology. Um, moving up to the, the is, this, is that the kind of pot of bubbling stuff yeah. way at the back there? I head over to it. Does, does this, with the instructions that they have in hand, looking in the pot, can I make out, is this what they're talking about or is this something else? It might be 
you could spend a lot of time here and not fully identify the full extent of everything they're working on. Definitely. Yeah. Um, um, I'm really worried that with this mage born blood, is it given willingly? Or are there mages being hurt, being taken advantage of? Is there someone working with them that has magic that's providing these? Is there a resources? black market for mage blood? Have you ever heard of anything through the the hmm. your dealings of like uh, academy members either having blood taken from them and then and maybe escaping or? Pretty that, sure. Uh, I I mean I've I probably bleed more than the average mage born. We usually Rudy, like to keep our blood a, inside. Uh, yeah. give, give me a perception check, too. Mm, seven. Noting around, yeah, you you, you scan around, um, and the the only thing that you're able to tell, though, is that the, the vials of blood have been kept, preserved, and kept relatively warm in their mm. temperature. Like, they've been storing them with the other heated elements that are here. Okay. Wait, if they're heated, that would probably mean that they need to be fresh. I don't think blood would last that long. Well, if it's if stored it was, properly. I feel like that's stored improperly if it's warm. Or sorry, the blood itself is still warm. Oh, so it's fresh. Yeah. Mm. Um, that means that the source could be nearby. There could be prisoners. Mm. Mageborn prisoners. That's... Christoph's missing. Well, that's active work against the what the academy stands for, doesn't it? Absolutely. Well, look. I think we'll have time to explore the rest of this. Maybe we keep moving and we... try to find. I've gathered evidence. That's great. We have proof mm, yeah. of what they're doing down here in some small form. Um. We're going to try to put a stop to this, but I mean, our worst case, if we bring this to the Academy, they're going to crack down here. Mm. There, There's going to be a hundred Amethyst Academy mages, well, maybe like 40, I don't know, swarming this place. But the focus needs to be on the, the, what's the name of the organization? <laughs> I always forget. Oh, the, um, the... Honestly, Sebastian, this is... The scale of what this operation is, immediately, this is the type of thing where the Academy would respect, like, this is the scale where the Academy goes, actually picks up the phone and asks the Silver Order for help. Like, the the precedent of this type of thing, this would... This is bad news bears. This is, this is where they would be like, no, Silver Order, you guys can do your job now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, th this, off, man. this is crossing every line. Th this shouldn't be happening here. These people are supposed to be learning normal chemistry so that they can do, like, make poison. They're not supposed to be creating bodies mm -hmm. or, like, mixing mage blood. This isn't good. I mean, what they created is unequivocally poisonous. Um, the, yeah. the, the resulting... This, this is... Even just from, from looking over it, like, this serum that they've, they've created that temporarily lets someone cast a spell, this is not, like, some sort of breakthrough that brings magic to the masses. This is, like, a desperate mm. use whatever means necessary to get power to, uh, implementation of whatever they're, lo whatever they're looking for. Like a self-sabotage mm -hmm. in the moment to... Let's keep going. Um, as you examine the large vial, uh, the large bubbling brazier, Sebastian, it undulates as, as the surface of the chemical liquid, a red, black, purple hue. Please, for me, roll a... Um, could you could you could you could you please roll me a wisdom saving throw? No, I don't want to. Okay. Eighteen. Okay. I say let's go, and then I'm just staring into this pot. The liquid, as you stare into it, the liquid sloshes 
back and forth as if you are a point of gravity to it. Mm-mm. 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 And Don't touch it. <laughs> as you reach towards it, no. <laughs> there is a surge as it solidifies and crashes towards you out of the out of the, the, the pool and spills out onto the ground. I back up like I'm I, as it's like inching towards my feet, I'm like taking steps back. You've dealt with sledge before. <laughs> no, no. It begins to move almost the patterns in the surface of the of of it almost looking like skulls or face screaming faces. Uh-oh. Roll for initiative. Uh-oh. What do we got? Three. Three for Rudy? Uh, 17. I got 21. This is gonna be stand vibes. Okay. Yeah. It is. Yeah. This is a stand moment. Oh. <laughs> oh no. But I'm backing up. Reaching out from it, um, Pluto, yep. you you see this. It, it's coming for Sebastian. Ah, what do you do? I I, I rolled higher than. Oh, Sebastian! I'm sorry. I, my my bad. I got the two of you mixed up. Sebastian, you were able to react in time. Yeah. Um. So as it like rears up to wrap around me, I hold out my staff. And I'm going to cast a Cone of Cold okay. from my staff on right at the, trying to freeze the goo in place. Freeze the goo. So casting Cone of Cold, that's gonna be... Cone of Cold is a fifth level spell, correct? Yeah. So the energy of the spell collides with the, the kaleidoscopic ooze. The magic flows into it like a chemical reaction the freezing energy and the magical power of your staff being absorbed into the form of the, the ooze. And it gets much bigger. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. So I take it I'm not rolling for damage and you're not making a constitution saving throw. No. No, no. I, so I like blast this icy beam towards all of it. I'm like, I'm gonna freeze it into place. And it just gets way bigger. And I just turn with it like looming behind me and look Pluto in the eyes. And I go, Pluto. <laughs> and that's my turn. Okay. In a wave, the creature washes over you, Sebastian. No. And as it does so, the tendrils of its flowing form seep into your ears and your nose and your nostrils. My nose and my nostrils. Yeah, oh. give me a constitution saving throw. 24. Okay, you succeed the save. You still take 12 points of necrotic damage though. And it, uh, <laughs> I reach out my like as it's I'm uh, there's just Sebastian's hand reaching out for you Pluto. Cool. You are still engulfed within it, so you'll need to spend an action to escape. Cool. Pluto, it's your turn. I hop the table and run igniting Ignatius. And I go to cleave above where Sebastian was. Thank you. Okay, roll a hit. <laughs> Ignatius! I say my own cool line. Die, abomination. I, I get a 29 to hit. You hit. Colliding with the top of it, it's almost solid. And you shear the top of it off, and it lands with a plop behind oh. you. Oh, no. <laughs> No! <laughs> um, um, does the fire do anything? <laughs> the... Or wait, what am I? I'm radiant, right? It's just radiant damage. Whatever essence of this creature it is, it seems particularly 
hungry for arcane magic, and Ignatius is a holy artifact. So while it doesn't drink in Ignatius's power, it still is resistant to the magic of the blade on a, on a fundamental level. Does it take any damage from that attack? Or? It does, but that is represented by the fact that another creature has just appeared. Great. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Mm. Anything else you'd like to do, sir? <laughs> yeah. I... Stab it with the poison needle. You stab it with the poison needle? Yeah. So I turn to the glob behind me, and can I grapple it? Sure. I I, I get into it, and I'm going to inject Actually, the... no, it is actually immune to being grappled. Then I just, I'm going to attempt to stab the poison okay. needle um, tail thing into it. Interesting play. Roll a d6. The paralytic poison. Uh, I get a five. Okay, it is now imbued with paralytic poison. No! <laughs> oh, that's not fair! No! <laughs> you can see it reproducing the paralytic poison rapidly inside it. <laughs> I can't see this, and you're lucky I can't see this, because I'd be upset. Oh, no. Well, hmm. that was an interesting turn. Uh, Rudy, what you got? <laughs> um, was it my turn? Uh, can I shove it? Sure. I, I'm i gonna shove it back from me. We'll make a post strength checks. I get a 15. Okay, you push the sloshing ooze away from you. And uh, I'm gonna run backwards towards the flame. The fire and burning stuff. Yeah. My hand is still reaching <laughs> out of the goo. All right. I don't know if I, uh... yep, I've done my work. <laughs> Rudy, it's your turn. Let me get this straight. His magic didn't work. His magic sword didn't work, right? Okay. Um, also, there's a negative experience with poison. With poison. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, what I'm going to try to do, yep. Yep. this yep. is like yep. a furnace over here, right? Mm -hmm. Fire. This is a forge. These are these are also crucibles, like smelters. Okay. And then this is the the, uh, the fire. Where the goo came the goo. from. Yeah. Um, so what I want to try to do is I want to take, I actually have like a torch. I want to run over to the fire, set it on fire. Mm-hmm. And then Misty step and stab it in the goo. <laughs> stab it in which goo? The paralytic goo, because yeah. I don't trust it. <laughs> okay, that's so true. You run, you you ignite your your spear. Yeah, I don't think I have enough movement to get all the way over there and then all the way. So Misty step as okay. my bonus action. So you light light it up and give me an attack roll. With non magical the torch. fire. <laughs> Just um, good old fire. So what do I? Roll with this. Uh, just an attack roll with your regular, uh, count your proficiency bonus and go for it. Uh, that's cocked. That's an 18. Well, it was cocked. Uh, so 19. It does hit, and as the flames burn into it, it sears the chemical composition of, of the creature, basically burning it and causing it to turn into this you know kind of the goop that happens when you burn a stew and it starts to get that solid mass that sticks to the bottom of the pot? Mm. That starts forming on, on the bottom as it shrinks and recoils. Ooh. Burn it with non-magical fire! <laughs> Got um, it. Poison. What is that? Mm. Got it. Do I have to, do I roll anything? Uh, no, you do not need to roll anything in, in, in this case. Okay. Beyond the hit. Um, and is that, is that one attack or is that more of an action? Oh, you can make multiple attacks. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and, and actually roll me 3d6 for the damage. 12. Okay, nice. Uh, so I'm gonna do that two more times with my lit torch. 22. It's a hit. Three, ooh, got 12. Okay. And then one more, 11 to hit. That actually does hit. <laughs> 
Hit the goo. Six damage. Okay. That was a bad one. Um, it, the, it is shrinking rapidly. Nevertheless, it is its turn. However, because it is burning, I'm gonna give it disadvantage on its attack roll. Ooh. Tries to apply its paralytic poison to you, Rudy. Uh, only getting a 14 to hit. No. Okay. Uh. Um, we go to the top of the round with Sebastian. Uh, I have to use my action to try to get out. Unless you have another way of getting it. I can't see though. Can I? You can see. Oh, nice. Um, cool. Thunderstep. I'm going to, so like as it's wrapping around me, I'm going to like, as, as it's just about to close around my face, I'm gonna thunder step. Actually, you know what? No, I'm just gonna squirm my way out. Okay, give me an acrobatics check. Classic. Cause I have something else I wanna do. I get a 19. You squirm your way out. I so, wanna say weasel. I weasel my way out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, More of a weaseler rather than a squirmer. I, I weasel my way, I, so I weasel my way out. I clamor underneath this table. I stand up, I like pop up. Oh yeah? Well, well, uh, take this. It's my cool line. Um, and I'm gonna cast, come on. Oh no, I'm out of fifth level spell slots. Well, there goes my plan. <laughs> <laughs> Your whole plan is... And I hold out my hands and nothing you happens. You can make a spit fifth level spell slot by spending sorcery points. Right. How many do you need for a fifth? Seven. Woof. All right. I create... Is... Yes. I'm not sure if that's an action or a bonus action, though. I think it's... Depends on the feature. Well, you can check that. I'm just gonna grab one thing because. And actually, I used my action to get out, so. I think bonus. Double check it. Just oh check yeah. It. But either way, that's gonna be. Everything. That's gonna be everything. Using a bonus as a bonus action on your turn. Yeah. Um, it means that I can't quicken the spell that I was gonna cast, but now I have a fifth level spell slot for next turn. So. Throw a book at it. <laughs> you like reading? I didn't say it. <laughs> I mean, I, I've used everything. So I keep clamoring. It's, it's weaseling. It's weaseling. You're weaseling your way out. I keep weaseling. Keep <laughs> weaseling. I really wanted to summon a giant weasel with my bag. <clears throat> Just in case I need more. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Yes. All right, so I, I hold out my hands, nothing happens, and then I go, oh man, and then I have to like focus for a second and power myself back up, and then I weasel over next to the forge, and I yell to you to get him. Okay. Alrighty, so the <clears throat> giant icker, um, it is going to come crashing down over Rudy, moving to engulf Rudy. Mm. Rudy, I need a charisma saving throw. Oh my, okay. Rudy! Uh, two. Okay. You see the blob splash no. over Rudy. Indomitable. Can I do that? Oh yeah, I can. Oh. Two, I mean, two times, yes. Can I do that? Okay. <laughs> don't, don't accept the two. Fifteen. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> as it crashes over you, you feel it flowing in through your nose and ears. Oh. And as you do, you feel it trying to take control of your blood and use you like a puppet. Second time in how long that this and has you happened to me? <laughs> surge with indomitability uh, and manage to resist its uh, it, its its attacks. <laughs> I want to take over my body. <laughs> okay. Um, moving right along to no. Pluto. Um, I'm going to grab the fire of the pot that it was just in. Okay. And I'm going to throw the whole thing at it. 
So you're gonna kick over the entire chemistry experiment and knock it over in, into it. Yeah, uh, but mostly the fire. Mostly the fire. Okay. I'm trying. I, I I'm, mean, it's it's kind of yeah yeah. So hauling over the the kind of the, the, the fire pit and pushing it up and over. I imagine that it's in some kind of like. It it is. Thing it's that enough can... that you could turn it over, but you might get very severe burns in the process. I accept so give the me a severe burn. Saving throw. I accept all of the burning as I grab the the open fire. Um, I get a twenty four. Okay, so you're still gonna take ten points of fire damage. I accept. Um, and it give me an athletic and now give me an athletics check. Yeah, and I get a, a twenty nine. Alrighty, the spill of hot coals and burning embers crashes into the creature and it almost screeches, but you're not sure if that's like a chemical noise or it actually screaming. Um, roll me uh, 10d6. Woo! 34 damage. Nice. And um, I'm going to run and I'm going to grab Rudy. Okay. And knocking over the fire was your action. So unless you're action surging, I'm not gonna quite let you grab. Oh yeah, Rudy would have been in the path of it. Rudy, give me an dexterity saving throw. 20. Cool, you succeed. I am gonna have you take half that fire damage. How much? How much? It, I'm it so was sorry. 34, so you're gonna take 17 fire. I'm. It, it's more flavor, but as I get close to Rudy, I'm going to use my last combat maneuver, bait and switch. Uh, I pull Rudy from the okay as I replace myself with it. Alrighty. You're putting yourself in there? Yeah, putting her in, switch it, the old switcheroo. And Rudy, you get, you get an additional, uh, I'm gonna take the AC <laughs> bonus, but uh, you can, um, all right, I guess we just switch places, yeah. So I, I, you're now on the outside. I'm I was gonna say, side. take the AC. Okay. <laughs> the paralytic ooze is gonna worm its way over to Sebastian. I'm, oh. It's worming, I'm weaseling. <laughs> uh, it gets a 27 to hit. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you take 10 points of necrotic damage, mm -hmm. or sorry, poison damage, and give me a con save against paralysis. You should have taken that potion against poison. <laughs> Someone shouldn't have injected poison into it. I get a 26. <laughs> okay, you are not paralytically poisoned. <laughs> oh! I actually thought it was a good idea. I, I really did. I want you to know that. And if someone had let me take this class on like weird <laughs> chemistry, for, chemistry. For, <laughs> for nobodies that don't know magic, I might have learned that that was a bad idea. It's your turn, Rudy. Um, since Monkey, there's no. fire around us, I just want to kind of make sure my torch is lit, and yep. then I want to stab it into the ooze the big one? in front of me. Okay. Um, Get it, Rudy! <laughs> no, eight <laughs> to hit. Darn it. Uh, are you playing Great Weapon Master as a penalty? No. You roll a three. Yeah, plus my proficiency, right? Plus your strength. Oh! Then... What does so it say? three plus five plus your proficiency. It's Thirteen. Five. five plus five. So plus... that hits. That does. Hit. Oh, okay, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I was not including my strength. Um, well, that's not very good. But a five damage. Okay. Fire damage. Fourteen. Does hit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This thing is not. Ten. Okay. And then. Oh, that's good. Okay, nineteen plus. Wow, uh, a lot. So definitely a hit. Uh, 12 damage. Yeah, because I can't use Great Weapon Master because I'm using an yeah. improvised weapon. Yeah. Alrighty. The flames begin to cause it to solidify more into this mud and sludge thing rather than a flowing liquid thing. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as, as it gets heated up, it begins to solidify uh, in, in the way that it reacts to, to that. So, going to the top of the round with Sebastian. Um, so behind me there's this forge. Yeah. Is it full of like coals? And... Yeah. So, finally, mustering my strength, I raise my hands up, wind starts to blow through my coat, and I levitate into the air as all of the coals in the fire behind me also levitate in the air. I'm gonna cast Animate Objects. On the coals. On the coals. Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to like, 
my eyes turn pure black, and I throw my hands forward, and all of the coals, like a machine gun, shoot through the paralytic creature. Yeah, cool. Uh, so that's going to be... How many tiny ones do I get? It's I think it's ten. ten. Yeah. Ten fire bullets. So, oh, ten attacks with plus eight to hit. Uh... I mean, eight, uh, 19, 18, way higher. Does 11 hit? Yes. So then that's also a hit. That's one, two, three, four. You've done they do 1d4 plus four damage each. Mm-hmm. All of them hit. All 10 hit? Yeah. Even without needing to roll the d4s, that will destroy it. So machine gun, all of the coal. <laughs> yeah, as and, like and just Sebastian's kind of like, floating there. Like, it, it, if you could almost imagine what happens when you bake clay. Mm. What remains is kind of this sticky, coagulated, solidified, but almost kind of flaky, chalky clay on the ground. But now it has a bunch of little holes in it. Yeah. Like Swiss cheese. Uh, and those coals are still floating there. Yeah. And I'm still focusing on it. All right. The ichor is destroyed. Nice job. So the the parallel well ichor is destroyed. So it's the big one's turn. Uh, it's going to try to flow into and seize control of Pluto. No. Uh, charisma saving throw there, bud. Ah, my thing that I'm not great at. Um, indomitable. <laughs> a seven into a twelve. That is a failure. <laughs> Wait, how many? Do you have any more? Indomitable. Should I at least have two? Don't you have lucky? I also have lucky. I can. How many times can I use lucky? On a is it once per roll? Yeah. Like one per contest. Okay, one. Lucky to turn a 12 into a 14. Open for 15. <laughs> oh no! If my minus one. <laughs> of course, it wasn't my dump stack. <laughs> okay, I accept the control of the ooze. I am the ooze now. It flows into Pluto. Oh no! Uh, now it's your turn, Pluto. You run and attack Rudy. <laughs> Die! I get a 26 to hit. Yeah. I also get a crit. Oh, oh sorry. You, when it's controlling you, you can only make one attack. Oh, oh good, oh, okay. good, yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. I also get a crit. Just, yeah, yeah. thanks. <laughs> but it is a full, full-blown full attack. I'm, yeah, my shield can't be. Can I, am I aware of what I'm doing? Um, you are, but you're not in control of your body at all. Okay. So it's horrible. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah. Jeez. I don't hold it against you. I know you're being controlled. <laughs> uh, 26 damage. Okay. I'm so sorry, Rudy. It's okay. I'm okay. <laughs> and you can see that the ichor is, like, coating around Pluto. Oh, good. Uh, like, like a, a weird straight jacket. Like... And as it moves your arms, they move in like the stilted fashion as it uh. tries to make you kill Rudy. Next up is Rudy. I take the <laughs> the, the torch and <laughs> into oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> aiming for the straight jacket of ooze around you. <laughs> I'm uh, helping you. Oh, 19 plus t 29. Okay. Jokes you on do you, have to hit armor. Pluto's AC though now. Twenty nine. You break through <laughs> my. You break through my crudely created armor from from animal parts. <laughs> oh, uh, 12, how? How did I ever see you getting through? Twelve damage. Twelve damage. Pluto takes the damage. So does the creature. I'm resistant to fire damage. Yay! Because of my helm of awesome. Oh, that's actually good. 25 yeah. to hit? Ah, I burned! <laughs> uh, 11 damage. Boom. <sighs> ah. 18 to hit. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because you're not using You got shield. through my the plate that's only covering my one pectoral. Oh. Um... Uh, Four. The ooze hardens around Pluto. <laughs> Sorry. And cracks, leaving him stuck in the in the in the space. 
Is it still controlling me? No, it's just it's destroyed, but now it's the resin that remains of it has solidified around me. <laughs> oh, and it's in my hair is yeah, everything. Yeah. Oh. oh, it's really oh, gonna hurt coming off. Okay, let me see if I have anything that can <laughs> get it off of you easily. <laughs> Use oh, some water. It's destroyed. Yeah. Oh, can I? Use... I'm still levitating here. Like... <laughs> um, can I use prestigitation to clean it off? You'll him? have to like break parts of it off him, but yes, you can use prestidigitation. I You're, use like, a hand axe to like to kind of sh- <laughs> not not directly. Use the, uh, use the flat. Oh, I guess I can use the flat end to hit it directly hammer to it. crack Just it. Hammer it. But I was thinking more like shave it off him an angle. <laughs> Just give me a really good hit on the back, and I'm sure it'll just like crack right off. Yeah. And then I, use, yeah, to get rid of it in your hair and stuff, I'm like, press the digitate. I gotta clean this Wash up. Wash it. I, <laughs> I feel like Sebastian hasn't grasped the context of the battle's over, and is like, has all these these coals still floating around him, and in a chorus of voices, he's like, I will burn it out of you, Pluto. <laughs> oh, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Just get it. Just get it off. Just get it off. Oh. It's really I go- stuck. Sebastian, I, you may want to come help us take care of Pluto, yeah? I, I, I kind of lower back down to the ground and all the coals go back into the forge and I come over and Thank start... Hey, yeah. <laughs> Pulled a chunk off. Yeah, just pour some water in there. Like, pour, like get yeah. some water in between the skin and the goo. Just to help, help. Hey, wait, help. I have like a decanter of endless water. Can I just start... Like it's, it's been in there since season one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, use that. Yeah, I'm just gonna start pouring the, the water over Pluto and like they letting bathe, it. In. They bathe me in the middle of the classroom. Mm. I, I pull there, out a there's sponge. There's actually tanks of water and sinks and stuff in this room. I give you a really delicate sponge bath. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Is that count as a short rest? Because it takes us about an hour. If you want to do that and no. spend an hour in this room short resting, you can. No, we have to rest you. No, we gotta save Kristoff. Gotta go rescue Kristoff. Who may have been a delirium jack. Who may also have been one of our delirium jacks. He could have been any of the things that we killed already, but let's save him. Um, well, if that's the case, then I, I'm, I'm ready to phone it in. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, how confident are we that we've murdered him in a casket? I'm not. You, 20 minutes not ago. Confident. You just had Sten Goo 2.0 in you. Sten Goo? Oh, yeah. Oh, so. so I, who knows I your story? lured a man to take Goo. <laughs> That's that's it. That's the story. Anyway, he apologized. Everything was fine. And yeah, it it had a horrible consequences. And I don't know. I carry that. I carry that with me everywhere. I mean, it wasn't. They, it, was, it was okay. So he, you murdered someone, and now you're guilty for it. He was a he was a he was an enemy of ours. A hooded lantern, which in retrospect. <laughs> that doesn't sound oh, like an enemy no, to he me. He wasn't an enemy. Listen, it it's was, complicated. <laughs> Yeah, there's just a lot of danger. Just like when we ate the fish person, <laughs> just like when we you made ate... friends with the rat prince, it's complicated, just like Rudy. Like when we worked for a guy that was also kind of into this stuff. Yeah, we, we worked for a necromancer. Anyway, Rudy, it's complicated. Stop asking so many questions. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, we should probably get out of here. I will reserve my judgments until I hear more of the story later. Yeah, Pluto, so much, so judgmenty on you. So... Didn't you kill all those paladins? <laughs> We were, they were our enemies at the time. Listen, it's Didn't been- Didn't you kill Theodore Marshall in a duel? Yeah, but- Who said that? <laughs> He's a, it was a duel. Who am I adventuring with here? The heroes? Like, we're, the, even... we're the good guys. Heroes of Drakenheim, Rudy, you've heard of us. Mm. Heroes I mean, of in this setting, history. this is the best that you're gonna get. <laughs> We got rid of the Queen of Thieves out of Drakenheim using rats. Yeah. We're heroes. Yeah, we're basically. Did you? I thought she's still active. Yeah, we didn't get her at her. We just like made her angry and ruined the. S- Listen, it's. I said it was complicated. You keep. Listen. And all I right. keep talking. Joe. I understand. All right. We all have our histories. You know, even myself, I've done some terrible things in the sake of surviving. So, I understand. But these terrible things that these apothecaries are doing are worse. Wor- much worse yeah. than our past um, I do have a side question though. Was the icker that was frozen to me, like stuck on me, stronger than the armor that I made? 
Just out of hindsight. It would have been, would not have been useful as armor. But it was stronger or not stronger? Like a, Like it was more protective? I mean, I chipped it off. It would have been useful. It would not have been useful as armor. Okay. Just because I don't want to have yeah. regrets later. <laughs> uh, but there is a forge here, and there are armor plates that would normally be bolted to those creatures that you used here. If you wanted to cobble it together and spend some time, you could I probably continue. get this into a, into a bit of half plate. I continue to create <laughs> my homemade armor <laughs> dressing, haphazardly placing plates and 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 pieces of metal upon me. Half plate? Mm -hmm. I'm basically a god. <laughs> You say as you like have this like scrap together, like you look like garbage. <laughs> it's actually... <laughs> Except for like the gleaming helmet. Yeah, this and gleaming... the, the holy shield and sword, and then just like and it smells awful. You know, like you know awful. when you're playing Fallout and like you can find all these cool armor pieces, but then you keep killing like the the wastelanders, and every time you put their armor on, you're like, what even is this? It's like <laughs> a piece of fabric with like metal chunks in various places. But it gives you plus 10 to small guns. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you got you got So you it. look like an you idiot are. for a while. They always look way cooler than you do yeah. in it. Oh, and it's man. the same case so here. so beefy now. I don't even need my old armor. No, I, I swear I love your dad's armor. I don't know why I ever parted with it. Such a stupid move. Never again. <laughs> Never again. What's next, you guess? I guess... A door? The door. Let's go okay. through that door. Forward. Onward. Onward. I mean, even if we couldn't rescue Kristoff, I think um, we need to find out who's who's in charge of all this. I mean, even, even if we can't save Kristoff, Pluto will turn him into armor. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's turn everything into armor. The room that you are entering is ostensibly the entrance to this chemical lab. For the room is closer in its description to what you would think of as a change room, a cloak room, or a clean room. Mm. There are several chests that have in them, there's a, a pedestal that has a, bear, a basin of water that one could wash their hands and clean themselves up in with several towels that are stacked there and there are as a bench with several chests that have in them clean aprons lab coats and protective gear and equipment sets of goggles sets of gloves the things that you would want to wear as protective equipment if you were working in this laboratory hmm. the double uh, um the double doors then lead out of this room I say we just yeah keep going keep, keep going. going. But are we, I mean, I, what are the odds that Christoph was brought this way? I don't know. Like would, um, he, would they have dragged him all the way through well, all of these? Those clothes were here, right? But and also the sad. the metal doors were sealed shut. So in the time that we were chasing the creature that took Christoph, Christoph was taken though not by the creature that we fought. By a different one. By one that left when we started the fight. Oh, that's the third one. Maybe it that's was... the third creature. Mm. But it would have had to, it would have had to get here. It wouldn't have gotten out through the steel doors. So somebody would have had to come in and take Kristoff. Mm. Yeah. So we still have another, so some other creature. Yeah. Through that way, though. Unless it, there's another way in and out of here. I mean, we don't know. If he was, we found his clothes. Yeah, yeah. Can something turn something into a delirium drag in an hour? You asked me? Is it, it's is more that, is of that a that? rhetoric question, Pluto. <laughs> I don't expect you to know the answer, really. I definitely I'm, don't. I do not know. Do you, does, in, in our Drakenheim experiences, is it possible that one of the dregs that we saw... Give me an arcana check. 14. If you took a shard of delirium, pressed it against someone's chest, and held it there, they could turn into a delirium drag within a minute. Pluto, there is a chance 
that I asked you to put your sword through Kristoff's head in one of those. But but listen. But why would they turn the Delirium Dregs on purpose right then and there? Surely unless, you'd be of more value in their other experiments, I'm assuming. Unless they make them into drags first and then they attach the metal onto them. Yeah, maybe it makes them more resistant to the process. But who can control that? The smithing. Either way, if, the, if one of those drags was Kristoff, somebody went into the chamber, acquired Kristoff, yeah. brought him into the morgue, jammed delirium in his chest, turn him into a drag and put him in a coffin with chains on it so somebody would go in and kill him. Well, somebody's been doing all of that. And that wasn't Kristoff that we killed. That was a delirium drag. And we've gone over this before. Mm. Yeah, we they're, can't. They're already dead at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing we can do to bring him back. There's no way that we've ever found to... I mean, there's one way some weird guy in Drakenheim found out a way, but apparently the cost is high. And that guy's crazy and is on the uh, kill list for the Academy. So oh we don't really talk about that. But there's not really very many options for undragging somebody. Well, then let's get revenge. Mm. It's the best we can hope for. Yep. Or maybe we find him alive. Who knows? Yeah, we'll, we'll take, it, take it or leave it. <laughs> uh, and and I push open the double doors. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The double doors open into a small library. <laughs> the musty smell of books and parchment fill the room. Uh, I should also, there's, there's switches here that control the opening and closing of the doors so that the doors, basically one set of doors cannot mm. be opened at the same time as the other. So we had to, we had to close yes. the back door and yeah. then open the, yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly, they're, they're, they're set up to be, it's st set up for, to be sterile. Like a clean room. Yeah. You enter into a small library room that has two sets of large, tall bookshelves with ladders running along them that are flanking in the center of the room a large reading table surrounded by, by chairs. And on the opposite sides of the room, there are several smaller reading desks and studies. Statues of several of the scholars of history are decorating this room. And perhaps this room has served as a library room for some time. There are reading lamps that are lit, illuminating the room. And splattered all about are a menagerie of books. But immediately, as you come into this room, Sebastian, you can tell that one of the shelves is stacked with spell books and other occult writings. Mm. Um, I head over to that shelf and just start analyzing, like, are these Academy books, it looks like, or, like, similar to what we would have in the libraries of the Academy? Give me a quick investigation check to determine what you can use quickly. I get an 11. Quick glance, these are the personal spell books of wizards. I'm going to pull one out and kind of like just start flipping through it. Is there any indication on like whose spell book it was? Even if it's a name I don't recognize. The owner of the spell book ostensibly was one uh, Silas uh, Firethrower. Have and... I heard of him? No. 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 Um, a mage of the Amethyst Academy. Um, and it's almost entirely fire based spells. I put that in the bag of holding. Uh, evidence, I, I, I say out loud to you too. Yep. Um, I want to look at some of the other shelves and see if it's of the same nature. Like, are there more spell books or are there regular mm. books in here? Several of the books cover very taboo personal research topics of occult experimentation. Mm. These are books on anatomy that, pulling one open, the sketches that you flip through describe experiments and dissections of how to do dissections on conscious people. Mm. And so they describe processes by, like, 
flipping through it, the diagrams show ways of opening the body, removing organs, and manipulating the body through various chemicals, types of stimulation, electricity, that essentially keep someone alive in surgical procedures that they simply should not be able to survive. Mm. Um, typically leaving them conscious and describing that. Mm. Uh, so that's the, the, the stack of books that you encounter. We take that one as well, evidence. Mm. Um, is there any, after I see that, I wanna see if there's any evidence of someone being in here very recently. There's books that are open on the reading table. What are those books? Several of them are bookmarked in, in many places. One of the books is on the top is titled Known Dragons of the Continent. And another book describes is a book that appears to be a combination of fairy tale slash true story, a book of rather Ill, Ill repute called Encounters with the Forest Dragon. And beside it is our several, it's illustrated in some ways, and it notes the existence of a dragon said to live in the Octonwald that uh, you've heard legends of yourself, Rudy, mm -hmm. Trethesia, the forest serpent. Um, and then stacked beside it are another strange book by, that is written by hand. And it is accounts on the anatomy of dragons. It appears to be from the records of, uh, it is in Caspian script, and it appears to be absconded from a Caspian collection of some kind, written by known Caspian dragon slayers. One thing that has me worried about these particular books is, um, especially that one about the dragon in Ochtenwald, is that Right now, there are researchers from this university there at the moment. All right, yes. uh, the chemistry department. The Lausanne Zambine with Urian Mueller. Uh, they have that joint expedition currently, and um, uh, I don't right, trust that they might not be involved with this now, seeing this. I mean, there are four books open on these tables all about dragons. Um, and specifically, one of them is about the dragon of Westmar Woods mm -hmm. the, the, and the Octonwald. I, I've heard stories too um, of, of a dragon in there, but hmm. what, what do they want with dragons? Um, the other book... Another book that is open on the table is a tome about monsters of the sea, uh, describing sea serpents and other beasts and creatures of that variety, and their purported physiologies and tales from fishermen and... And as you go through several of the others, there are books of questionable nature as well as concerning research notes perhaps acquired from less than reputable academy individuals. There are other spell books and other just records of clearly magical things, including some entries describing necromancy and demonology. They are going after all sorts of creatures. Well, okay. One thing that we know, Wrath would actually probably know a little more about this, but um, a lot of the spellcasters today are ancestors of those who made pacts with demons or dragons or angelic creatures or any number of other creatures but dragons and demons were two of the big ones that's that's how we ended up with dragonborn and the demon-blooded folk 
Um, so, if they're looking into it, perhaps they're using dragons, demons, and sea monsters uh, to try to grasp their inherent magic abilities, to infuse those into their work. If they've stepped up, they've tried magic blood, magic user, magic born blood. It's not working. Go to as the expected. source. Yeah, that that totally tracks. Mm. They're gonna try to step it up a notch. If they can collect dragon blood, that that's magical blood. And they could try to make a more potent version of this spell casting. Maybe mage's blood wasn't enough. Maybe they're going directly Maybe, to yeah, the source yeah, of magical yeah. creatures. Yeah. And then that, if they succeed on making magic in a bottle that anybody can take, we we have, I mean, I know that it's, it's not like a sorcerer king situation, but it's a rise of like, everybody becomes a sorcerer. It's an imbalance. Yeah. That's not natural. But also, yeah, these, they're going way out of line. They're killing random strangers, students. They're experimenting with that black ooze, which we know, not good. No, don't, do it. don't touch it. Don't touch it. And they've created these horrible monsters that are going out and doing, like, where, you know what, maybe if the Academy wants to get into, like, bottling magic, we can talk about that. But right now we got to shut this down. Mm. We do. It's too dangerous. Um, Shall we? Do we go through the, yeah? I think we've collected enough evidence here. What time is it? Well after midnight. But not morning yet. No, it okay. couldn't be morning yet. Because one thing I do know that if, if, if this, we've collected a lot of evidence. Yeah. But we also don't want to blow our facade yet. If, if this goes into morning and we like can't figure it all out. Mm. Uh, Rudy, you got a lecture to give tomorrow. It's true. It's going to be a late night. So, I, I mean... Do we, can we send someone after the scouting party? This, 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 in the Octonwald? Can we send someone out to go... I mean, I think if they've been there for, or... before we showed up, they left. Yeah, I know, but like, they, they might be if they're in the middle of their... They're jazz. I think if we can figure out what's going on here, that might be our second. Yeah. Second step is to catch up with them before they can get made Drinking. word of what's going on. Yeah. Of us hopefully shutting it down here. But I think we need to soldier on and, yep. and yeah, figure yeah. out. Let's and find try to, Let's let's see if we can Christoph. potentially save Kristoff, but we're not like really sure if he's alive. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's. It's been a few hours. I think at this point, <laughs> I'm not confident. We're gonna see that guy again. Uh, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Uh, yeah, let's go through the door. All right. Okay. Exiting through the library door, <clears throat> you come yourself coming yourself to another part of the hallway. Looking across the different ways, you see first of all the other side of the other steel door. But there's a staircase going up. And the staircase extends upwards through the shimmering pink purple curtain. Then the opposite end of the hallway also ends in another door. And similar to the doors that you came through for the clean room, this is another one that has a set of switches that ostensibly might be another clean room. Um, we either go up, which would give us a bit of an idea, maybe what building we're in and what department we're under, or we go see what else they're concocting in this lab. If we go up, we can come back down, right? True. Can we? That was more of a question. Question. I think so. Okay. Um, can whoever owns, I don't know much about this type of spell, can they teleport into here? No. 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 <laughs> Thank you. If I remember my classes, which I don't, the answer is probably no. All right. Okay. Who knows the campus the best? None. None of us. 
Kristoff, <laughs> probably. Kristoff <laughs> um, could be down this hallway. I mean, depending on what building okay. this is, I have a little bit of an idea if it is in the uh, scientific building. I have my suspicions that we're under the uh, Guild of Conscientious Scientific Chemistry Department. Because <laughs> they did say only certain professors were allowed in the bottom levels, and I don't know if this is the bottom levels, but... Um, one thing I, I want to be mindful for is it, we've got to know which way people are coming in. So if someone's going to come up through that cloud, I either want to lock a door or set up an alarm to know if someone's coming down behind us. Should we head up then? All right. Just poke, poke your head in. Poke your head in. Be, be, be stealthy. I poke my head through the shimmering. Okay. As you come up through the shimmering field... The stairs basically come to a landing and then go up again. And as they go up again, they end at a stone wall where there is another lever the side of the beside. I got this. And then I walk straight into the stone wall. <laughs> you crack your head with a resounding thump. Ow. It's not an illusion. Should I pull the lever? I mean, they, they don't, they're not typical magic yeah. sorcerers, yeah, so yeah. yeah, they probably would use something a bit more mechanical. <laughs> I've already, as, as you're talking to me, I pull the lever. Yeah, yeah you're right. Makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. The lever opens into a small storage room. Not unlike one of the storage rooms that you saw before. But this one far more conventional in appearance. So as it opens, basically, it the the wall pulls forward, and you can see that there's a shelving unit beside you on either side, and there's a shelving unit in front of the wall that pushed forward, mm. and you are in a chemical storage room, one that is far tidier, but also far more mundane in its contents. Was I shown this as part of my tour in the building from, what's her name, Erla Lockwood? Coming up, up the stairs, this looks like part of that hazardous floor. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 as you re recall, the chemistry labs were down the basement, but then there was another basement again. This is another sub-basement oh. below. So this is not the restricted basement. It's un what you just explored is underneath that restricted basement. Yeah. The restricted, restricted basement. The <laughs> secret restricted basement. Mm. Yeah, yeah, SRB. Okay. Pluto's right, this is an SRB. Should we go the other way? We hate us, SRB. Um, I'm wondering, again, do we want to prevent people from coming in here behind us, or do we want to just let ourselves know? I know that there's probably already stories spreading of the fact that three known heroes appeared in the quad and then went into the ground and never came back out, but we don't want anybody to know what we're up to. If you cast a spell, they might know. They might find out. So out, we got to keep it super outside? secret. Even if they cast, if you cast it outside, they're gonna come back here and try. I mean, you can lock the door if you want. Oh, so I have a better idea. What I, I can. What? Because <laughs> you're rolling dice. So, yeah. So what's, yeah. What, what are you, you doing, bud? I reach into my bag. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> why? And I pull out a black bear! <laughs> what? <laughs> a bear? Pluto, why is a black bear gonna help us right now? The black bear will warn us. No, it won't! <laughs> I have a magical spell that'll do that, Pluto! No, but this is a, this is more natural. It's more likely that they're willing to they're see a black bear. They're not gonna come in here and see a black bear and think that's normal. <laughs> How did you get into the secret Guys, you're, restricted you're basement? Distracting. Okay, okay. Can you even speak with animals? <laughs> if someone comes in the room, you come get us. Pluto, it's a bear! I Pluto, do have it. proficiency with animal handling. No! And I know how to talk to bears. 
Give me an animal handling check. I get a 12. Well, as you summon the bear in the middle of the, I guess the hall, like the stairwell mm -hmm. that leads down, it gives you a very confused look uh, as the group of you try to decide your next steps. I think that the next steps on this staircase will have to come next week. Uh. <laughs> well, at least we summoned a bear. So what really, problem solved. <laughs> you can use a bonus action to command how the creature moves and what action it takes. It's now on guard duty. Okay. <laughs> well, with that, well played this evening. A big thank you to our amazing cast. Thank you. Jill, Kelly, you. and Joe for playing tonight. Well, and a huge thank you to Kyle for bearing with us today. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. And a um, huge thank you to our dungeon master, Monty yeah, Martin. Fun. Uh, so fun. You you really let the goo loose on us there. That was that was an intense battle. I didn't know what to do. And you always you're always taking control of people. It's not good. But yeah, thank take, you. Take control of the situation. You're, you're always yeah. taking control of the situation. Um, yeah. Thank you, Monty. Uh, thank you, Kyle. And in our game tonight, we used a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. They've graciously given us permission to use them in our tabletop games. And we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. We have this wonderful uh, Dwarven Forge uh, set with uh, miniatures by WizKids and Hero Forge. Uh, Elizabeth Perot has done some of the player character artwork. And our music is by Tabletop Audio. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring story. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts, including what's the worst that could happen? Goo. 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 It's goo. It's usually goo. <laughs> Our videos and live streams are made possible thanks to goo. Well, more specifically, <laughs> you. And if you are one of our patrons, that's who. <laughs> hey! 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 Um, our Patreon supporters uh, contribute to the channel monthly and make sure that we can continue to produce this live stream and not all of our shows and our content that we make on YouTube. And we appreciate them uh, so, so very much. We would appreciate as well if you would like to become one of our Patreon supporters. And you can find out how by following the links down below. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons. So if you want to chat with us about all the various types of goo that tried to kill us tonight, hop onto our Discord uh, once you've joined our Patreon and you can chat with us there. Uh, you can also join in on the writer's rooms and the monthly Q&As. Something about the phrase, the phrase homebrew goo just came <laughs> into my mind and well, I don't know. <laughs> don't love it. Don't trust don't, it. Don't, don't love trust it. it. Don't, love, don't love the phrase homebrew goo. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been a goo-tastic episode. Goo-tastic goo... I don't know. Come up with more goo jokes. Yeah, or at least puns. Puns. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching all the goo. And we will see you next time with more goo in Drakenheim. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>